The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Chapter Twenty One. The Lion becomes the King of Beasts. After climbing down from the China Wall, the travelers found themselves in a disagreeable country full of bogs and marshes, and covered with the Tall, rank grass. It was difficult to walk far without、uh, falling into muddy holes, for the grass was so thick it hid them from sight. However, by carefully picking their way, they got safely along until they reached solid ground. But here, here no. But here, the country seemed wilder than ever. Solid the grass. But here, has the ah. But here, the country seemed wilder than ever. After a long time and tiresome walk through the underbrush, they entered another forest, where the trees were bigger and older than any they had ever seen. This forest is perfectly delightful," declared the lion, looking around him with joy. "Never have I seen a more beautiful place. It's it seems gloomy," said the scarecrow. "Not a bit of it," answered the lion. "I should like to live here all my life. See how soft、uh, the dried leaves are under your feet. How rich the green moss that clings." To these old trees, surely no wild beast could wish a pleasanter home. Perhaps there are wild beasts in the forest now," said Dorothy. "I suppose there are," returned the lion. "But I will not see any of them." They walked through the forest until it became too dark to go any farther. Dorothy and Toto and the lion lay down to go to sleep, while the women and scarecrow kept. Watch over them as usual. When morning came, they started again. Before they had gone far, they heard a low rumble, as the growling of、uh, many wild animals totally whimpered. The a little more,、uh, a little, but none of the others were, was frightened, and they kept along the wooden, the the well trodden path until they. Came to an opening in the wood, with in which were gathered hundreds of beasts of every variety. There were tigers and elephants and bears and wolves and foxes and all the others in natural history. And for a moment, Dorothy was afraid, but the lion explained that the animals were holding a meeting, and he judged by their snarling and growling they were in great trouble. As he spoke, several of the beasts caught sight of him. <coughs> And that、uh, once the great assembly hushed as if by magic. The biggest of the tigers came to lion belting. Welcome, O King of Beasts! You have come in good time to fight our enemy, bring and bring peace to all the animals of the forest once more. More. What is your trouble? Asked the lion quietly. We are all threatened, answered the tiger, by a fierce enemy which has lately come into this forest. It is a most tremendous monster, like a great spider, with a body as big as an elephant and legs as long as a tree trunk. It has eight.、Uh, These long legs, and the monster crawls through the forest. He seizes animals with a leg and drags it to his mouth, where he eats it as a spider does a fly. Not one of us is safe while this fierce creature is alive, and we had 
called a meeting to decide how to take care of ourselves when you came among us. The lion thought for a moment. Thought for a moment. Are there any lions in this forest? He asked. No, there were some, but the monster has eaten them all. And besides, they were none of them nearly so large and brave as you. If I put an end to your enemy, will you bow down to down to me and obey me as can the forest? We will do that gladly, returned the tiger. And all the other beasts roared with the mighty, we will. Where's the great spider of yours now? asked the lion. Yonder among the oak trees, said the tiger, pointing with his their forefoot. Take good care of these friends of mine, said the lion. And I will uh, go at once to fight the monster, away to battle. He bade his comrades goodbye and marched proudly away to do battle with the enemy. The gray spider was lying asleep when the lion found him, and uh, it looked so ugly that its foe turned up his nose in, in disgust. Its legs were quite as long as the tiger had said, and its body covered with coarse black hair. It had a great uh, mouth with a row of sharp teeth and foot long, a foot long, but its head was uh, joined to the pudgy body by a neck as uh, slender as the wasp's waist. This gave the lion a hint of the best way to attack the creature, as he knew it was easier to fight it asleep than awake. He gave a great spring and landed directly upon the monster's back. Then, with one blow of his heavy paw, all armed with sharp claws, he knocked the spider's head from its body. Jumping down, he watched it until the long legs stopped wiggling. When he knew it was quite dead. The lion went back to opening where the beasts of the forest w were waiting for him and said proudly, You need fear uh, your enemy no longer. Then the, the beasts bowed down to the lion as their king, and he promised to come back and rule o over them as soon as Dorothy was safely on her way to Kansas.